Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. This episode will be one of a series of episodes about alternate new worlds. This one focusing on ways that the Chinese could have influenced our new world. Matt, what is the first topic for today? Well, first, when you're going to talk about China and the New World, you have to talk about Zheng He. Absolutely. And Zheng He is sort of the, he's, he's probably the most remarkable figure in sort of the Chinese exploration that you can think of. And he has been rumored to have found North America. Rumored. There's people who debate about this. There's a book that really yeah. argues for it, but all the, there's no, never been conclusive evidence. But let's say in our scenario, Zheng He makes it to North America. So it, what is he going to do? I would say probably do more trading than colonizing because that's what, you know, Zheng He, we know Zheng He made it to India. He made it to uh, what's now Oman and Yemen and to Saudi Arabia. And he made it all the way down to what's to Tan, what's now Tanzania, down to Zanzibar. So, I mean, he got very far, but none of these were for colonization. They're all for trade purposes. Oh, right. Here's something to keep in mind is that these were not areas unknown to the Chinese. Like These were routes that were that were well-traveled by merchants in the past. It's just that the special thing is that it was a formal expedition undertaken by the Chinese government. Like, it, it wasn't ridiculous that, that someone was going to Saudi Arabia. The reason he went on these trips was not of discovery. It was for the sake of trade. It was for setting up relations with people collecting tribute, giving gifts to people in, in return for things like giraffes. Yes, for they love giraffes. I know they brought back a Big lot of them. Big fan of giraffes. Okay, Zheng He shows up in the New World. He's got his treasure fleet ready to accept goods. Let's say he lands in California. Yes, he lands near San Francisco. What does he pick there. up? Like, like what, what amazing commodities do the Native Americans have to give him? Mm -hmm. And are they going to accept gold? Like gold, basically. I mean, they got gold, but I mean, they don't got iron. They got nothing made of iron. They'd have to go farther south to the Aztecs to find a major trading partner. Or yeah, the Incas. yeah. I mean, the Aztecs have all kinds of jade and turquoise and, and gold and stuff gold, like that. And, and then the Incas would be the same way. So the yeah, but so but they're probably going to make landfall somewhere in California or along the, what's yeah, now the, the west coast of the United States. Just for the sake of the uh, the, the water currents, like it just kind of makes more sense that way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and they're yeah, so they're not going to put down colonies really. At best, they maybe put down trading posts, but they're not not like the Spanish did. You know, quickly sort of setting up colon like a colonial sort of system mm -hmm. that they're more interested in in getting you know money and getting yeah. goods, and that's definitely a sort of a factor because of the way China had developed and, you know, they didn't, you know, China had so much already. There wasn't like they really needed to spread out, you know, <laughs> the middle kingdom. They didn't really, they considered themselves sort of already the center of the world. You know, what, why did they need to go out to go settle other places? Oh, right. Sort of I mean, thing. okay, okay, okay. Kind of to shoot some holes in this whole theory mm -hmm. is the fact that you know, what does China want from all this? I mean, it makes sense that they would go to India and whatnot for trade purposes, but mm -hmm. why go across the Pacific Ocean to this land that they know nothing about. I mean, it's it, there's some evidence that suggests that perhaps, you know, some Chinese might have known about some continent between them and the New World. I mean, it's the not old. that far from, like, a place like Japan to, like, Alaska. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not in any way unbelievable that they would someone would have an idea that there may be something out that way I may mean, not know how big it was but they knew something was out there but you know it's it's not like india where there's like a, a fabulous treasure trove of goods and whatnot that, yes. that they know about and that is in constant contact with the outside world i mean they would be taking it's they would be risk. doing something crazy it would be like somebody with like a panax freighter that's like let's not send this to to a port in Jacksonville. Let's send it to the bottom of the sea. Let's look for some Atlanteans that we can trade with. I mean, it'd just be completely ridiculous. It would make no sense. It'd be an insane thing. Uh, it really would ma mostly make sense if it was an accident that they arrived in the New World. Well, may they would have to, I think, with the amount of ships and people Zheng He was taking and the to that sort of toll on the Imperial Treasury, yes. they would have had to have had a if they're going to send this something out like that, they would have had to believe that there was something that like some sort of place they could trade with. So, I mean, you could, the only plausible way I could think of is someone, you know, someone either who had been there, you know, said like, Oh, there's cool stuff there or someone 
just lied and said, oh, you know, I came back from there and there's just some, there's this incredibly wealthy kingdom there that you want to trade with. <laughs> the, the peach blossom spring. This is a, 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 a literary trope that comes up in, in Chinese literature. It's like mm -hmm. this place, this perfect, wonderful place where, where everything is, is great and people are basically immortal and life is harmonious and beautiful. And it's this place that people try to get to, but it's impossible to reach. And, and, and like, have that kind of story, like someone comes from this strange land where, where everything's amazing. Uh, there, there's actually a, a story in, in, in Chinese myth of a guy named uh, Shu Fu. He's an admiral who served under the Qin government in antiquity that supposedly sailed out into the east, it sailed out in that direction looking for an immortality elixir and never returned. Like, what if he came back and said, yeah, it's awesome over there. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. You should totally go back. Well, I, I just think they'd have to have some reason. There's got to be some yeah. reason to justify that because this wasn't like, you know, the, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria were three yeah. very exceedingly small ships with very few people on them. So in their minds, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella are sort of commissioning them a lot they probably were thinking well there's a good chance this guy's never coming back because look how big that ocean is out there and do you think those ships are really going to make it back but Jung Ho has had very seaworthy incredibly advanced for the time so they would have had to have had an, a reason I, I just don't think that the Chinese government would have authorized expenditures on that level just simply to send something to be like well see what you can find out there you know, mm. and a map, and they may have pushed farther south though. If they make landfall, like let's say in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area of California, probably would be like they may move farther south and say, "Well, the coast seems to go farther south. Let's see if we can find something." Because, like, I mean, obviously they probably would have traded somewhat with. And I mean, there was like maybe you know furs or something like that they could have traded for, but not on the level that they would want. And they'd also mm -hmm. probably want gold specie. Like you know, that's what the Chinese probably would have wanted in payment for their goods and. I don't think they're going to get it from the people there. I mean, that's why I said like they would be, they would probably be successful in, in establishing trade relations with the Aztecs or the Incas would be very profitable for them, but it's a hell of a long way. But the yeah. fact is, is that you would wonder, would they get thrown off if they're landing in what's now California or Oregon? You know, that's, that's really far away from, I mean, California isn't that far away from Mac the Western edge of the Aztecs, but like, they have to go farther, even farther. And that's a risk. If you're, you know, let's say you spend months and months making your way across the Pacific in a fleet, in a trip that no one's ever done before. And you reach land and it's like, you're, I'm ready to see this great civilization and there's nothing there. Yeah. Are you going to say, well, we might as well just turn around now or we could go farther south, you know, or maybe never come back sort of thing. So it's a real balancing act. And we don't really know because they were, they, since they already were trotting well, a well-worn path in reality, it's hard to say how Jung Ho is going to react when he's not doing something that's that, you know, well-known. Well, um, I, I think the most plausible scenario for this occurring is from the book In the Years of Rice and Salt by Kim Stanley Robinson. Yes. And in this book, it's not Zheng He, it's actually much, much later. It, it, uh, but there is a fleet that's sent out to go conquer Japan that gets knocked off course, not by a divine wind, but ironically, a lack of divine wind. Like they get caught up in, in the ocean currents and are swept out into sea. And they end up being carried across the Pacific Ocean and kind of like what we said before, they, they end up in around California and then go south a bit and, and meet the Aztecs and whatnot. And like I, I come out of it kind of feeling like, OK, this is actually kind of plausible. Like I can kind of understand this because it's not intentional. They don't do it on purpose. Mm hmm. Which I think is is probably like the most plausible way that they we, that we could ever see a Chinese influence in the new world. Yeah, and even then, even if they do establish contact, I doubt it's going to go farther than trading because mm -hmm. the trading is valuable. But I just don't see them colonizing because they never were in history. The Chinese civilization has never been very much of a colonizing civilization. They haven't had yeah. a huge interest in it. And Zheng He just simply was, even if it was soldiers who who got blown off course like they're gonna want to get back like they're not gonna say well we're gonna stay here right like no, unless no. there was no other option sort of thing mm. um i mean there are allegations that like you know you know persecuted monks or persecuted like groups did try and like escape across and made it to like there's people who allege that like is it the navajo <laughs> are like have have some origin or is it 
is it maybe is it the Navajo? There's some group in Arizona, one of the Indian groups in Arizona. Like they, there's people who allege that like, or is it the Hopi maybe that they have like some sort of roots from like an Asian culture? And there's there's a, uh, a tribe in Ecuador, like a group of people like around some area on the coast who like claim vehemently that they are descended from Japanese or Chinese people who settled there because mm-hmm. of like pottery they found. But like regardless, the point is is that. Um, they probably would have made a lasting impact. That is, unless they bring like smallpox. If they right. do, then they're making big changes. And we actually addressed this in the the episode about Europeans, you know, different European landings in the New World. What does that look like? Well, if the Chinese are just trading there and somehow managed never to give them smallpox and stuff like that, that's going to change it a little bit. But it's not going to radically change the history of the New World. But if they bring smallpox before the Spanish get there, that's going to be an issue but also yeah. if they let's say they were in constant trading contact with the aztecs because junko is around what 1430 so but imagine but if they're in constant trading contact with the aztecs like what are they gonna do when they run into like cortez <laughs> what is that gonna look like that would be really interesting overall i don't see it making too much of an impact and i know that actually in the wake of junghua's voyages before even columbus hmm. went across they sort of with it was a withdrawal within the ming sort of dynasty of they weren't very interested anymore in doing too much foreign exploring well what if cortez you know marches onto nostilon and then receives gunfire from the aztecs like <laughs> they've like they've gun- traded with the, the yeah, chinese just- so much that they've learned how to create gun man powder. yeah that would be uh, that would be a hell of a shock that would change the calculus whether they still would have the aztecs would have managed to hold off the the spanish is a different well, question but it, it, to be fair though you have to remember that, that that it wasn't like the aztecs were just completely bowed over by oh my god guns like no like like yeah, the spanish sure. had the help of a couple hundred thousand you know native auxiliaries that came with them, that's the, true yes the Tlax collins and whatnot this it was it was as much a civil war as it was you know the the, the spanish that's true but, running in but and, the spanish had smallpox Yes, yes, measles, that helped out tremendously. Which for them. very much helps. It also killed a lot of their allies too. But, That's definitely true. Uh, yeah. But it, it's interesting. The Chinese, it, it's not, it's not completely implausible. And there are people who say like, oh, we found like anchors off the coast of like Los Angeles yeah, that are clearly. On. There's been arguments over that, and I'm not going to delve into. The, but it, it just, it, it, but that that could be interesting. Um, I don't see it changing the new world. If it, it's very unlikely, it's one of those things where it's like 90 percent unlikely that would have happened in the first place. And even if it does. Uh, happen unlikely to make lasting changes yes. and like you know, and what is it you know okay so they they were tra- what if they were trading some of the aztecs before the spanish like overrun them what is that really how does that really change stuff like, i mean it's just cool i mean it would just say that the chinese had act but like the chinese civilization was incredibly advanced at the time so there's nothing surprising about that right yeah you know and with especially with jung ho's voyages they were at the time very interested in seeing what was outside of because they just come off of uh, a lot of sort of problems with internal internal problems, right, Max? Yes, uh, the Ming Dynasty came right on the heels of the Yuan Dynasty, which was a Mongolian dynasty. Like they were, yeah, Kublai Khan and all they that. They were ruled over by invaders, mm-hmm. and the Ming Dynasty didn't last forever either. I mean, it was knocked out by the Qing Dynasty, I believe, in the 1600s. So I mean, yeah, it's not like they're standing on the steadiest of ground here. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and and this is actually the Zhenghe era is like unique in the amount of foreign exploration oh, because yeah, Chinese yeah. Chinese emperors and governments tended not to be terribly interested in in sending out like I mean they traded obviously with people and they had ships and stuff but they weren't very interested in you know going all the way to Zanzibar yeah after a lot of the costly advances of the Tang dynasty like all the expansionism that they did uh, expansionism was really looked on in a kind of a sour light. Like it's this thing that's, it's, it's just so costly. And, and so and there's so much of China already. It had all this yeah, population, I mean, all this China's, food, all these people. I don't know if you know, Matt, China's freaking huge. It's gigantic. I, I do know. And there's a lot China of people is, that yes. live there. There's a lot of Chinese problems that are really important and are a big deal. Well, and, and also, and it's, yeah. uh, modern, luxuries like exploration and whatnot were just not in the minds of people no, when back you got then. the mongols pouring over the yeah the great wall of china you may be a little bit less worried about it's out to the east then we've got to repulse these invaders and then they conquer you and then you have a long time to you know worry about other things yeah, we're really imposing a lot of our modern views onto onto these yeah. old and, and this is and i think it's, it's you know because in today's day and age if I really wanted to, I can book a flight from the United States and I can go to China. And it's, I mean, it's a long plane ride. It's what, probably 13 or 14 hours. But 
like compared to how much time it would take then. And this isn't like I'm fly- I don't know. I, I, I know that I'm not flying off into somewhere. I, it's not like, well, I don't know if I'll ever be back, you know, sort of thing. Right. Like this is that's why like sending out because they knew what was to their west and to their south. but They didn't know what was east. No one had really, I mean, people, I mean, there was, there were sort of rumors that there was some land out there, there was people out there, but no one had really ever consistently explored it. So that would have been a huge risk. And I wonder if, you know, would they have spent that amount of money with, or was, you know, was the Ming dynasty interested enough in expansion or trade that I was going to say, excuse me, go out this, go out to the East and see what you can find. Like it just doesn't, something doesn't sit right. It doesn't sound right. Yeah. and doesn't feel like they would do that. Uh, plus we also have to keep in mind how big the Pacific ocean is. Yeah. It's big. And traversing it, even in the ships they had in that day and age would have been very difficult and taken months. Yeah. If you compare the, the trip from Iceland to Newfoundland with the trip from China to California, it's <laughs> yes. <laughs> worlds apart. Yeah. Worlds apart. Yeah, it's remarkable in some ways that this is very this is a little off topic, but it's remarkable that that the, the way that most of the, the that the, the most of the settling by Europeans in the New World was done by the Caribbean, whereas the the natural path should have been by Iceland and Greenland and Newfoundland because that's not that far. Like the plane mm-hmm. hop from, you know, today from Ireland to Newfoundland is not far at all. And in that day and age, okay, you use those islands as bases for ships. Like, wouldn't have been that bad. But like, the Chinese maintaining constant contact with the west coast, western coast of the United States, what's well, not the United States, and with the Aztecs or the Incas in that day and age would have been incredibly costly. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, especially in a time when when costliness was prohibitive. Like, uh, yeah. there's just there's, no, there's really not a lot of, of benefit from their position yeah, in absolutely. setting these things up. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, it would have been interesting, and, and maybe Jung Hood did make it to America, if you believe. Yeah. There's some authors who believe that. I there's don't some know. Some authors, yeah, but yeah, there's people who've made the argument, but they are. It's it's strange. The a lot of some of the argument has been that they actually made it by going sailing around the southern end of Africa and making it <laughs> sailing all the way up through the Atlantic. So I I don't really uh, know. There doesn't seem to be any real basis for that. That's really been confirmed. But you know, it would been interesting. Uh, but uh. It, it, you know, it's an interesting question to answer, but it doesn't really, I don't see how this is going to become a regular thing or really change the whole face of North America. But, you know, it's an interesting thing to think about. I think it's cool because because the Chinese did have the resources to get them there. Like, mm-hmm. I don't doubt if they really wanted to, they could have gotten them to the western coast of the United States based off of the amount of food those ships could hold and such. Like, that, it was possible, but the question is, was there other, were the other motivations enough to override cost concerns and such so so let's say that there was a small trading community inside of san francisco like a like a a very minor you know maybe a hundred chinese people mm-hmm. or so that mm-hmm. very heavily intermarried with the native population mm-hmm. what would it look like today like what would america be like today like would we see a lot of chinese names for things all over the place or it's hard to say but if it's that small i don't know if that's big enough to make a change if they haven't brought any real diseases over with them like um, they just would have been when the Spanish reached what's now San Francisco Bay, they would have been like, this is kind of interesting. Like, I remember, it's funny because it's very reminiscent of this. God, I, rem- keep, I wish I could remember the story, what the story's name was, but it was in one of Martin Greenberg's anthologies. And it's about Sir Francis Drake, like basically sets up sort of a form of Protestantism because he got to San Francisco Bay in reality. But in mm-hmm. this one, he like sort of imbues some Protestant, like, religious beliefs into the people he meets and he leaves and there's no real changes in history for a while and then when the spanish get there and they're talking about how you know we're all these catholic people and they're like we hate you we're protestants and then it's like they fight them and the the spanish eventually win so like it would be analogous i guess if they show up and it's like wow these people seem like they seem like the people from china okay like i I, if they're that you know i don't think it's going to really impact that'd be really interesting and it would be sort of like a interesting footnote you would see and like if you were visiting san francisco they would probably say something about it or it would be an interesting people would write books about it but i don't think it's really going to change the face of american history yeah like a nice little anomaly like the hellenistic buddhists of bactria that sort of thing it's like huh that's weird that's interesting you know like the uh the greeks who were left behind by alexander's campaign who eventually became oh basically culturally eastern like chinese well i know there is this rumor that there's this town in in china where all these people have like blonde hair and blue eyes and they claim that they were descendants of like a roman group of centurions who found their way to like china which is not implausible it's in it's 
it's implausible, but it's not impossible. No, definitely Stuff like not that. impossible. But like, yeah, it would be one of those interesting footnotes, but it, I don't think it's going to change much. But like people theorize that these, that these Hellenistic people might be the reason why a lot of Eastern art started to express like muscles and stuff like that like the greek influence moved east really like there's a lot of never, i've never heard of this it's really interesting max there's there's a lot of uh greek style statues of of buddha in these areas where like buddha looks looks more like like a zeus or a, and yeah. a, a i have Hermes to look that up i'm gonna thing. i'm gonna look in i'm gonna look into that because i've never really heard much about it and it makes sense considering alexander made it all the way to the indus you know he was in mm -hmm. what's now pakistan also conquered up i guess somewhat into what's now like you know turkmenistan and all that so I guess it's not impossible at all that they would have been there. And people did travel via the Silk Road for a long time, so. Yeah. But then again, it's not something that's that's terribly rele relevant. It's like yeah. a, it's like an interesting little fact that's yeah. not but really But yeah, yet again, going back to what we talked about in the episode about a different European conquests of the New World is that the truth of the matter is, is if even if people are there pre-Columbus, like we cannot point to any definitive real changes that predate 1492. And that's the thing. You know, it's cool. It's like an interesting factoid, you know, like, oh, the Chinese made it to the West Coast of the United States before Columbus. Okay, cool. But do they make any changes? No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where it's cool, but it may change the history of the people who they encounter. But is that going to be, you know, it's hard to predict if that's really going to echo sort of to today. Are we going to see, is there going to be something demonstrably different about the United States because of this? Mm -hmm. Don't really know. And I don't think there would have been. So that's something interesting to think about. But yes. I, I think that that kind of wraps up our yeah. episode. Mm -hmm. So, so guys, if you uh, disagree with anything that we've said today, or you just want to send us some, you know, if there's maybe there's some scenarios you'd like us to discuss, or anything you want us to look over, please email us at talkernithistory at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to get some ideas for some future episodes. We're, we're you know we're planning ahead, and we'd love to hear what the viewers want to listen to. We so, love feedback. Yeah, we love feedback. That's really important to us. And we want to hear what, what you guys think about what we're doing. So uh, this is Matt signing off. And this is Max signing off. See you later, guys.